The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. Oh, I can see the yellow crown. What's more fun than getting outside, being with a bunch of friends, and doing something that brings everyone together? Tim is the key to the ICAN program, the ICAN initiative. And he's in! <laughs> it was part of a railroad put in in 1913. Here at Old Tunnel, we have about three million bats. Texas Parks and Wildlife a television series for all outdoors. It's just before sunrise at Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park, and some creatures are stirring. Everybody ready? A group has gathered for one purpose. Oh, I have the checklist. To see and hear as many kinds of birds as they can in a day. I think the goal for today is 100. They are competing in the great Wasn't Texas it? birding classic. Team name? The queen fishers. These are the queen fishers. I'm the king of the queen fishers. <laughs> Before they enter the park, Did you hear it? they have already made some progress. Got it. Sweet child. Woo! <gasps> We're not going to move from the parking lot. We're going to stay here. We're going to stay here the whole day. <laughs> you have lunch, binoculars, field guide. You need to use the restroom for a go. A few hours to the north, another team gathers. Team Osprey, let's go. Team Osprey. It's the awesome Ospreys with two birding mentors and their science teacher. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> this team of fifth graders is also embarking on the birding classic. Okay, there was a bird we saw a lot on Saturday. Do you remember what bird that is? It's something barrelope. You are correct. It is a phalarope. Good job, Brian. Martha McLeod uses the competition the to teach students about biology shoveler. and shoveler also done. teamwork. Did you see it? Uh-uh. All right, whole team's got to see it. That's a big skill we work on with these kids. We teach them to collaborate together, valuing each other's opinions, listening to what someone else has to say. You guys keep your eyes to the sky. This is the culmination of a year's worth of study with these kids. Call it out loud when you see a bird. Like the queen fishers, There's a great blue the awesome right ospreys hope to see a hundred bird species by noon. Yay, great blues on the list. And they too are off to a good start. 88 more to go. <laughs> Kids need a tangible target to shoot for, and so setting 100, that's a good number for them to try and work for for a species count. Back in the Rio Grande Valley, the counting continues. There's the woodpecker again. <laughs> that's a uh, black crested titmouse. Yeah. And that's a cardinal. It's getting good. <laughs> right back in the street. Green jay. Nice. I got the green jay, I got the titmouse. Morning dove. Oh, that's another bird. That's a lot of bird. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, that's a beautiful bird. It's a green heron. It's pretty incredible birding down here, which is why this competition is so much fun. More than half of all the birds that have been seen in the U.S. have been seen in our four county area. Oh, what's that? One of the Great Texas Birding Classic teams had almost 200 in one day. Great Texas Mosquito Classic. Oh, my get away, mosquito. What's more fun than getting outside being with a bunch of friends and, and doing something that really just brings everyone together. <laughs> While the Great Texas Birding Classic was once held only along the coast, it is now statewide. They're good, they're good. Teams choose when to compete from mid-April to mid-May and how. Serious birders may opt for a 24-hour big day in their region or even a full week statewide, visiting as many sites as possible. The Sunrise to Noon tournament may be more ideal for youth teams or those more focused on just having fun. 
But perhaps the most relaxing way to participate in the birding classic is known as the big sit. We have some shorebirds right over there. Like, see where that blind is? Yeah. The big sit is a really great event in the birding classic. It is literally birding from a 17-foot diameter circle for a full 24-hour day, or as much of a day as your team wants to do. The big sit is just something that literally anyone can do. We call it the tailgate party for birders. I'm an amateur birder. A lot of these people are newbies, and then we have one or two really good birders on the team that are helping explain what everything is. Most of them are cliff swallows. So it's this wonderful learning experience. Simi Palmetto Dan Piper. I got to see that one. We are the tweeting chats. The chatting tweets. Tweeting chats. <laughs> they are communications folks, and they tweet, they use social media. A chat is a type of bird. A, a yellow-breasted yellow chat. chat. I'm sure it tweets. <laughs> it's just a very fitting name for this team. This group is great, and they're having a good time. We're an embarrassment to birders everywhere. <laughs> Back on the coast, the awesome ospreys hit the birding hotspots of Port Aransas. We are at the Leona Turnbull Birding Center. Oh, here, fix your jacket. There you go. Okay. I'm hoping these kids can get to 100. They're the last thing to compete. Where'd it go? Being at the tail end of migration, it's going to be tough. We just flew over this. Right now, they're neck and neck with my fourth grade team. Yeah, the Eastern Kingbird up there. There's an Oriole. Oh, is he a spoonbill? Whoa, what is that? What I just. The red and black bird. We're gonna go to several places today, so we've still got a lot of time ahead of us. Oh, there it is. By mid-morning, the queen fishers and their king are looking for kingfishers. As we were eating our breakfast, a green kingfisher perched about 20 feet away from us and then uh, dashed across the water to the other side of the pond. They're on the t-shirt. We're in the area to get them, so hopefully we'll get all three today. The team has migrated to the Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands, another world birding center site. We've seen a lot. Hopefully we'll see more. In our region here in South Texas, the last 10 years, there's been so much development of these nature centers for the world birding centers. So it's getting easier and easier just to find a place in your backyard neighborhood to go out and bird and see what's out there. And some true neighborhood birding is also on the agenda. One of the things that I like is our trees are kind of short. <laughs> so you can drive through and look through the neighborhoods, and there's some great neighborhoods with old growth trees. Oh, it's right there. And you can see some really great birds in there. Oh, I can see the yellow crown. So you can do drive birding as we were doing today and walking around. Very easy to do. Okay, let's go. Bird on. We are not to 100 yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in the 70s right now. Okay, if not a blue jay, something else we haven't gotten. I hope we don't see it like at 12.01. No! Does everybody see a sandwich turn? Yes. No. Right there. From their mobile bird blind, the awesome ospreys continue their count, taking in habitat from beach to bay and woodland to wetland. Oh, that's the red start. That's the red start. It's got like the yellow on it. As noon and the end of their competition approaches, the heat and early start begin to take their toll. After a while, you kind of start getting tired. Eventually, even the birds need some rest. It's their noon freakout. It's 12, guys. That's it. Woo! Bird like crazy all morning, and then go eat lunch. It's nice. <laughs> Great blue heron. Yes. Great egret? Yes. yes. In the final tally, the queen fishers did not reach 100 species, but they did finish second in the all ages sunrise to noon competition. 86 species. We didn't get to 100, but 86 is still pretty good for half a day. See anything cool, Brian? The awesome ospreys placed third in their region and age group seeing 105 species of birds. And the tweeting chats saw 54. So it's coming in here, Ranking guys. them first among their region's big sits. But the numbers may really be for the birds. In its first year as a statewide contest, the great Texas birding classic raised $17,000 for habitat conservation and nature tourism projects. It's for a good cause and we had fun. I really enjoy it. I enjoy bird watching. I enjoy keeping track of the birds that we see. 
and it's definitely more fun for us when we do it together. What was that? <laughs> so it's a um, tanager. Yes, it is. Truly amazing in a year's time how much they've learned. I thought that was yeah. Not just going out and look at birds, oh they're cute, they're pretty, let's count them. Yeah. They learn that they've got a responsibility as stewards of the environment. Oh, yeah. They inspire me daily. Cool. Yeah, look. They're interested, they're curious. They just need that adult to take them out in the outdoors. You guys ready? Those are good birds. Keep looking. <laughs>
I'm Nysa Brown and I am the Park Superintendent here at Old Tunnel State Park. It was part of a railroad that was put in in uh, 1913. The uh, people in Fredericksburg were trying to get to San Antonio quicker and they had a railroad that went from San Antonio over to Kerrville. And that rail line wouldn't lay tracks over this hill because they said it was too big for them to pull freight cars and passenger cars. And so people in Fredericksburg decided to start their own railroad. And they decided to tunnel through the hill. They started in March of 1913 and they were done by July of 1913. And they dug it out by hand. And the first train ran through August 1913 and it was in operation until 1941. And then it was bankrupt so they decommissioned it. In the 50s, a rancher that lived down the road saw smoke coming from this direction and he thought something had caught fire over here, came to investigate, and it was the bats. So they've been here since the early 50s, for sure. Uh, here at Old Tunnel, we have the Mexican free tails, which our population is at its peak right now, of about three million bats. And we also have about 3,000 cave myotis bats. They can maneuver through trees and bushes pretty easily. You can see their wingspan is quite a bit longer on the free tail. Free tails are migratory bats. So they migrate here for the summer and then they stay through the fall until about the end of October. And then they'll head back down to Mexico where they can still find food through the winter. Over 21,000 people come just during bat season to see the bats. And that's not counting all the people that come during the day just to hike the trail and maybe look at the tunnel because there's a lot of people interested in the history too. Good show. It's a beautiful night for bats. We have two viewing areas. Our upper viewing area is open every night of the week. And it's usually a good view from up there when the bats are coming out earlier. And this lower viewing area is only open on Thursday through Sunday nights for a $5 per person fee. It's a good view from down here most of the season. Most of the bats here in the United States are eating insects, so uh, very beneficial to agriculture. There are bats that eat mosquitoes, so that's a good bat to have around. These bats are active all year round. People are more educated now than they have been in the past. I don't find as many people that are afraid of bats as I used to, so I think that that perception is changing a bit. The more people are understanding how important bats are to the environment, so they want to help them rather than be afraid of them. We're in the middle of our prairie dog town right now. It's part of our big process of, of restoring the park back to what it would have looked like prior to European settlement. Historically, prairie dogs were just totally abundant in, in Texas and the entire Southwest. But they have been reduced to about 2% of the original habitat. So we're giving them a sanctuary. We're restoring them into the park, giving them a sanctuary where they can be prairie dogs. Are all these burrows that they uh, make, are they all interconnected? You know, many people think that all of the prairie dog burrows are all connected to each other within the town, but they're actually just connected within the cotteries. And cotteries are the family of prairie dogs. They're usually made up of one male and maybe four or five females. See the guy just looking over the edge, this one right over here? He hadn't quite figured us out yet. Yeah. <laughs> don't look like a sentinel, he keeps looking you can see the prairie dogs, you can see them actively uh, participating in the ecosystem. You know, the bison wander through here. And then the people can walk right around here and watch this all happening at the same time. There's two babies. Yeah. Oh, look. See the two babies coming out of the hole? Yeah. <laughs>
Now the pups are born three months ago or so. We've got a few of them already popping up. Now we got a bunch of little babies running around. It's really neat to see. Our goal here at the park is to restore it to what it would have looked like 300 years ago, thereby giving the people that come, the visitors, the opportunity to see wildlife in a natural setting. We are restoring an indigenous wildlife to its native habitat. This is its historic home. A lot of people, when they hear interpreter, they think languages. And so they think of an interpreter as someone that connects two people of two different languages. My name's Ranger John. I'm the park interpreter here. So what I do out here is I connect our guests to the natural, the cultural, and the recreational resources here at the park. They're soft on the side, if you feel the side. This park was designed to be a recreational park, uh, specifically a water recreational park. The fishing's really popular out here, but of course we have lots of camping sites and about 20 miles worth of trails out here. Anyone notice anything on the coloring of this gator? Stripes. Anyone guess why they have stripes? Yes, camouflage. You know, I look at it and I'm taking people up the staircase of stewardship. Through like my social media work, I'm introducing people to the park. Hello everybody, Ranger John from Huntsville State Park with our Live with the Ranger broadcast updates and news about the parks. Then once people come out, if I can meet those people with programs and outreach here in the park, then we're introducing them to some of the natural resources we have out here. We have a special event coming up next week, 8 a.m. We're going to be doing Dogs on the Dogwood, so join myself and my not-so-little-anymore Bark Ranger Queso. You know, I just decided I personally wanted a dog. But I wanted to make sure that he would become an advocate for how to uh, recreate in the park responsibly with your pet. And so Bark Ranger Queso, he's got his own Instagram page right now, and he comes out here for some of my programs. We love having our pets out here, but we have to make sure that they recreate responsibly. So today, in case you did not know, is National Corn on the Cob Day. So John and I have put together some interesting recipes for you today. John has been working with me uh, to teach me how to do Facebook Live and how to go out into the park and make videos. He makes everything sound like an adventure and so exciting to be a part of whatever it is that he's doing. Between every two pine trees is a doorway leading to a new way of life. What I love about being an interpreter, well, for one thing, is my office. It's coming out here, it's connecting to people on the trail, it's connecting to fishermen on the pier, uh, it's running programs out there. Sometimes it's you know going out and checking on wildlife. Sometimes I'm doing rescues of wildlife. So I think that's also a nice thing is that each day is different. Now this is the Hercules Club. Now, it's also known as the toothache tree. I grew up in East Texas, I grew up in the Piney Woods, and so every time I come out here and I start in on that trail and look around and just see the orange carpet of pine needles on the ground, I feel like I'm home.
This series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places.